Oh. But it's, it's really, really a real problem. I can't fix the federal government. I'm frankly ready to run. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I, can't, uh, I can't fix the federal government. What we can fix, have to fix, will fix, and we are, we are on it, is, is our own local financial aid systems. That has to be fixed. And we are deeply aware of it. Uh, it's one of those things, it's one of those problems, it's like, it's like a leaky roof. You, you don't know it's leaking until it's raining. And then everybody says, why don't you fix this roof? I know, I know it's leaking. You know, now we'll fix the roof. Now, we'll, now we're on it. And we, we are deeply aware of the challenges. I got one other word I want to say to you, and it, and it, has, to do with, it has to do with debt. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mark Green and I started talking about this before I actually became the president here. One of the things he pointed out to me, the debt level of students is too high. How can we, how can we begin to address this? Again, it's a very, I, I hate to constantly say this is a complex and nuanced issue, but it is. Now, let me, let me just give you an example, okay? We can, we can fix it. I can fix it easy. I can say to you, as soon as we know that you've borrowed $20,000, you can't borrow anymore and you can't go here. Okay. That's, that looks like an easy fix. But what about, what about the kid who, whose only hope of attending a private university is to borrow money and leverage himself into a new future, into a new, entirely new socioeconomic strata. He, he's, he's, he's borrowing to go to college so that his children won't have to go to college. So he graduates with $40,000 in debt. I hate that. I absolutely hate that. But he's, he's changed. He may be the first person in his whole family to go to college. So he's, he's leveraged his future so that his children will not have to pay, will not have to borrow to go to college. What do I say to him? You can't come here. You can't experience the, the joys and delights and privileges of a Christian higher education. Or I can say, okay, anybody that can't afford this gets to come here free. I'm way, way in favor of that. So is Mr. Green. We all love that idea. The only thing is things like that. You know, Paying the faculty, <laughs> turning on the lights, <laughs> you know, stuff like paying the president. I'm very in favor of that. <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you, man. Uh, those, those issues are very, very complicated. The debt level of the, of, the num of the percentage of students who graduate from here. Now listen to this. The stories are, are, the statistics are misleading to a certain extent. In a way, they're not. The debt level of those who graduate with debt is too high. We know it's too high. The issue is that, in a way, it's a private issue. In a way, I, I can't, I can't say to you, you can't, don't borrow money on that car. I can say to you, I don't advise that. I think that's a mistake. You don't need that car. Don't borrow that money now. Get a job, work two more years, and then buy that car. But it's your car. And borrowing money for college is, it's your decision, your life, your future. Now, one of the things that we want to do, one of the many things we want to do in financial aid, is more debt counseling. To say, do you realize where you are? Do you realize how much you're borrowing? But what, what about the kid who says, I know exactly how much I'm borrowing, and I'm willing to spend the rest of my life paying it off so that I can have the kind of job that I can get with a bachelor's degree from Moore Roberts University, and my kids will come here because I can pay. But my dad works on the back of a garbage truck, and he can't make, he can't make enough money for me to go here. But I'm going here, and I'm going to borrow the money, and you can't stop me. Now, what do I say to that kid? That makes nifty stories in the newspaper. <laughs> but what do I say to that kid? You can't come to ORU. What we try to do is give as much financial aid as we possibly can. 92% of all the students in this college get some kind of financial aid. We do the best way that we can. We are pressing forward with that idea. But it's, it's very complicated. We did not get to the level of student indebtedness here without decades of that happening. And it's that, that dial is not going to be dialed back overnight. Now the good thing is this, and this is what statistics don't tell you. 55% of all the students who graduate from here graduate with no debt. So the, the amount of average debt per student is not actually true. It's the amount of debt of those who graduate with debt. 
So if I had a college of 5,000 students and 4,999 of them graduate debt free, and one of them borrows $100,000, I have the highest percentage per capita debt load in the United States. Because that statistic is based only on students with debt. Now, I'm telling you, Allison and I went to college poor as church mice. She was 17 when we got married. I was 19. And we worked, we worked multiple jobs. We worked full time. I bagged groceries at an inner city grocery store in the District of Columbia until 2 o'clock in the morning and hitchhike home and make an 8 o'clock class. And we worked. And we graduated from college with no debt. We graduated with a master's degree and no debt. I finished a PhD with no debt. Now it can be done. But I want to say several things to you. One is, it, it, it can't be done easily, it can't be done without huge sacrifice, and it, and it can't be done without a lot of help. And, I, and I'm, I am sensitive to the fact that this is a private university. I'm sensitive, very sensitive to the fact that we are, that we are not Kmart University. This is, not, this is not cheap. I'm very aware of that. Don't you think I'm, I'm very aware of that? And I'm also aware of the fact that this university is a threshold into the future. We have a substantial number of students here that are coming out of a socioeconomic background that does not easily access this university. And they make the decision, this is my future and I'm going to borrow to have it. What we want to do is help them to borrow more responsibly. We may say to them, now look, you need to sit out a semester. Get a job. If this takes you seven years or eight years to graduate and you graduate debt free, you need to consider that possibility. What I'm not sure I'm willing to do is look across this audience and find the kid who's already borrowed too much and tell her to go home. Does that make sense? And if you're the one that's got a heavy debt, then you can't borrow that amount of money toward your future in order to graduate and then blame the university because you borrowed it. So it's a very complicated, it's a very complicated issue, and it, and it, it, it makes for overly simplified newspaper stories, but what that doesn't take into account is somebody who says, this is my chance, and I'm going to, if I have to pay for it for the rest of my life, this is the education I want. That's very complex. That may be more answer than you want. Usually I do that. <laughs> Discourages people from asking further questions. <laughs> <laughs>